Hey everyone, today we're gonna take a look at what is new in Blackout 2.3.9, which includes some new view states, a brand new inhibitive fader mode, and more. Let's take a look. Here we are in Blackout. I wanna start off by showing our brand new output view state. So if I double tap effects here and go into my effect, I see I have a two-step effect, starts the lights at 100, brings them down to a hard value at 50. In my light settings, I have the first step at 28,000 Kelvin, and in the second step, they go to 10,000. Now, if I play this effect, because I'm not using background values at all, I see the pillbox is animating, showing what's going on. This is great, but it would be nice to see the actual values of the lights. Well, now I can change from our default value view state into what we're actually outputting. So if I go into our output value, now I actually see the values as they're changing. And this orange text here indicates that I'm in a view state. If I go into table view, I can also see the color temperature changing. So if you have a complex effect that you want to monitor, this new value view state is a game changer. If you want to see DMX values, you can switch to output DMX. And of course, I can go back to our normal value view state and see what my light's background values are. In this example, I can see I have recorded values for 101 and 102, but the yellow text here tells me that 102 is being controlled by a fader I don't have selected. If I go into my faders page, I can see I have two sequences here, and each sequence is for one sky panel. The yellow text is helpful, but we've added a view state to show the references of what you've recorded. So if I check out my reference sequence, I can see here that 101 is getting its value from sequence one, look one, and 102 is getting its value from sequence two, look one. And if I switch this to fader, for 101 I can see page one, fader one, and for 102 I can see page one, fader two. And to test this out, if I bring this fader down, it goes to zero because it's no longer getting any data. And of course, I can always go back to my value view state. For input value and input DMX, these have to do with if you're using another console or a media server and you're sending SACN or ArtNet data into Blackout. I made a separate video on using another console to input into Blackout, so check that video out because I show that view state off in that video. Now let's take a look at the brand new relative inhibitive fader. So I'll play this effect again and switch to our output value state. So here I can see our units go to 100 and they go down to 50. If I go into faders and select my S60 group and I switch that to inhibitive, by default, an inhibitive fader acts as a hard limit. So if I set this to 70%, the units will just never reach above 70. And if I go back to our value view state, I can see that. They go from 50 to now 70 instead of 100. So again, by default, that inhibitor is just acting as a ceiling, can't go above whatever level that's set at. But now if I go back into my fader page and press and hold and change the configuration on this fader to be relative and save that, now let's try bringing it down to around 50%. And if I go back in, I can see that the whole effect scaled down. So now I'm going between 50 and 25. If I double tap on the fader, and type in 20, now I'll be going between 20 and 10. Inhibitive faders are so useful for effects, and now you have two ways of working with them. Try it out, it'll make your programming easier and better. We have some improvements to live plot as well. More things are MIDI learnable. One of my favorites is you can now MIDI learn snapshots. So if I come to link status, connect to device, MIDI learn, you can see the snapshots are now learnable your zoom controls, your 90 degree rotate, your layers, and even hiding the sidebar and toggling in and out of live and edit mode. I also have been loving adding looks to live plot and we have an improvement there too. So in live plot right now, I'll select a square, I'll change my target to a look, and I'll add it right about here. And then I'll come out of plus mode, grab my look, and change the target to be my work lights here. And I'll use my finger to move it and scale it up. Now if I click back to properties, we have this toggle to use look timing. So if I come out of live mode and go to look one and then select my work lights, you can see it uses my look timing. 
but usually for work lights, I want them to snap on. So I can come back here, select my work lights, turn this off, and come back into live mode. And now if I go to look one, and then hit my work lights, they instantly snap. In live plot, you can also now add commands. So if I change my target to command, and grab a square, and put it right there, turn off the plus, grab my command, and now I can change the target to any of these command line options. So you could build a whole new command line keyboard in live plot that's organized just the way you want. We have a couple more bug fixes and improvements. So as always, check the release notes in the description to see those. I also made a video on how to update Blackout, so check that out. But one final one is if you're in the patch and you go to add a fixture, and let's say I add this dimmer, and I change the fixture number to 101, which is already the fixture number of one of my sky panels, if I try to save that, I now get a pop-up telling me that that will overwrite my sky panel. So a little quality of life update there. Okay, that's it for this one. Let me know in the comments what you think of the update and what you want to see more of, and I'll see you next time.